Hey everyone, hope you're all doing very well. Welcome back to another one here on the channel. In today's video, I got an interesting one here for you that's going to look at KV and compare that against the torque value that we get from brushless motors. Now KV is often misrepresented as the amount of torque that you actually get out of a motor and when you compare a low one versus a high one, you would expect that the lower one produces a bigger amount of torque and that's not the case as we've demonstrated in the previous video. What I want to do here is break into a practical example of power system selection, comparing the different KV values and ultimately understanding what does happen to the torque value of a brushless motor when we choose the same voltage and then we also choose different gearing to make up for the lack of voltage on a lower KV motor. Let's now jump over to the whiteboard and run through the calculations that allow us to determine the overall torque we'll get at the wheels of a radio control vehicle. All right guys, let's get started here. The first thing I wanna do is set up the scenario. So we have a radio control vehicle that we are selecting here today, and that's going to be the Limitless V2. And the other area that we need is a realistic goal for this particular vehicle. Now what I did is I threw up a number up on the board. Our goal is going to be 150 kilometers per hour. We're gonna build a speed run that hits that speed, and we're gonna use two brushless motors. We're gonna use a low KV versus a high KV. This is going to be the obvious reason for the video, but ultimately we're going to determine what happens at the end of all these calculations between our low and high KV brushless motor. Let's break into the details of each one of those motors. So specifically our low KV motor is going to be the 1515-1Y. I did mention that earlier. It comes out to 1257 KV and it's going to run on 6S. We're going to pick 6S for this because this is typically the maximum for electronic speed controls for many of them out there. Once you break into 7, 8, 9, 10, all those higher voltage values, you're going to break into higher price points then of our electronic speed control. So to keep costs down, 6S is a really good opportunity to do exactly that. Then we're going to look at the specifications. This comes right off the motor manufacturer's website. We saw the chart up here. I'll show it again. It shows that the maximum for this specific wind is 42 amps of current. And then we take a look and compare against our higher KV brushless motor. This is showing us the 2200 KV has a maximum current of 70 three amps. And we are going to be comparing 2200 as our high KV against the 1257. Now generally when I say to optimize a brushless motor's power output, you want to select the highest amount of KV to give you the most amount of RPM. These motors are both limited to 60,000 RPM, which is going to be our absolute maximum. Both of these should fall under it, so we should be okay in terms of voltage. Voltage doesn't kill brushless motors. RPM does it mechanically kills them so this is what we've now got for our car and our brushless motor now what we want to do is understand the gearing in order to come up with what this looks like so what I've done is I've used the patreon calculator to come up with the gearing that makes sense for us now to hit 150 kilometers an hour this is the gearing that we're going to need for this specific brushless motor our low kv motor is going to need gearing of 35 on the pinion side and 34 on the spur and then we get a overall final drive this is the overall final drive for the radio controlled car which includes the differential at the back as well as our gearing here at the motor so this is 2.72 on our low kv motor and then we take a look at the gearing on our high KV brushless motor, we need 2746. Now, 2746, both of these should be close to realistic for this radio control vehicle, but what is really required here is to make certain that these gears actually physically fit your radio controlled application. You always wanna start off with your speed as your what you expect to actually hit with this power system, and then you wanna build it backwards to figure out what gearing makes sense. Once you understand what gearing makes sense, here we would actually go to the radio control vehicle and see if 46 can actually physically fit. I have a V2 Limitless. I'm pretty sure I run a 45 tooth the spur gear in there and it's actually a pinion gear that I've placed in there as a spur gear and I'm pretty sure a 46 tooth would fit as long as you get the cutout in the right spot that should go as well but it is definitely around the maximum size that you could possibly get away with on this V2. 
So the final drive to get us there at 150 kilometers an hour then can be reduced, which means our gear ratio goes up to a 4.77 final drive ratio. Now the next step that we want to take a look at is what is that maximum torque that we're going to get at the wheels of our limitless V2? Knowing the maximum torque that we get out of this vehicle is going to allow us to understand a good comparison between low KV and high KV. So our formula here is going to be the inverse of KV, which is our KT value. This is our torque constant for a brushless motor. We multiply by the maximum current of our brushless motor, and then we also multiply by our final drive ratio. And if you go and take a look at two of these elements, the first two as part of that equation is going to give us the torque that is created at the actual motor's output. So if we take a look at these numbers and we plug in our KT value, 7.596, this is milli Newton meters per amp multiplied by 42 amps. That there is gonna give us the motor output, which works out to about 319 milli Newton meters. And then we multiply that by 2.72, our gear ratio, to give us the torque multiplier of our transmission. And at the wheels, we're gonna have 868 milli Newton meters. And that's the total amount of torque now that we get overall at the wheels. Now we take that and we apply it exact same way to our high KV brushless motor. And here we have our KT, same formula and the KT value is 4.348. So you can see this is a lower number because a higher KV value makes less torque per amp, but the difference here is our 73 amps, our current value is now higher than the old 42 that we got from our lower KV motor. So when we take a look at the motor, torque, we are getting the same amount of motor torque, 319 on our low KV motor, and this works out to 317.5. So this is about a 1% difference, and there's rounding errors probably on the manufacturer side when they give us specifications, and our own side too. I did round numbers here to make this board up. So then we take that value, we know we have the motor output pretty much identical, for torque output, we look at that gear ratio and we multiply it by the 4.77 and now we get 15, 14 milli Newton meters at the wheels for this particular scenario, which is going to be our higher KV brushless motor. Now, ultimately what we've determined here is that we are making 74% more torque at the wheels with our high KV brushless motor and it makes identical torque at the motor output shaft. The only way that we can actually get more torque at our brushless motor is by taking this 42 and increasing it, getting that to a higher number. Of course, we're gonna be overdriving the motor based on the motor manufacturer specifications, but if you can do it here, you can do the exact same thing here. If you're gonna go and increase this and actually run this motor at 50 or 60 over amp it, it's gonna get hotter for sure, but you can do the same thing here with our high KV motor. Take the 70 and raise that just by the same percentage. So that really doesn't help us compare these two different brushless motors. A couple points that I wanna make in addition to what we've covered here is that the KT value is found by taking one and dividing that by the KV value. Now I'll throw up here an interesting point on KV just for fun, but KV must be also in rads per second. This is very important. I often get this question here on the channel that you can't calculate the KV value the same that I've done, and it's because more than likely you've not converted RPM per volt into radians per second. If you don't do that, you're not going to get the SI unit of rads per second. So a note there. The other couple points that I wanted to make are closely related, but ultimately the motor manufacturer gives us a low KV option to select from in order to utilize the potential voltage here. If we don't want to operate higher voltages with this brushless motor, this would not be the best to run. A value closer to the higher RPM end of the spectrum is always going to be able to produce more horsepower. And more horsepower means more torque at the wheels because we can use gear ratio to bump up that motor shaft torque. 
the overall torque of the motor. And if it drives more RPM, we get bigger multipliers, which is going to increase and bump up that overall torque value. The other point that I wanted to make is really about optimization of KV selection. And that really comes down to what voltage are you running? If you are running 6S in this particular example, like we've done, you don't want to select this particular wind of motor unless you don't really want to go that fast. You're taking a relatively large motor and you're going to slow down the performance potential that you get out of it because you're not really optimizing it for, to its full potential. It's like taking a gas engine of a certain caliber. Let's say it's a, a two liter four cylinder and you're gonna, instead of running it at 8,000 RPM, you're gonna max it out at 4,000 RPM and you're never gonna go over that 4,000 RPM. Probably not a good idea if you're looking for performance. And that's essentially what you're doing here. Now, if you let that engine scream all the way up to 8,000 RPM again, you're gonna gain back all the potential to hang that higher RPM, stay in that same gear and use the transmission to leverage the additional torque for you. That's ultimately what we're doing here in this case. And the point that ties into what we talked about is really the range of RPM. If you run enough voltage higher than the 6S, you're gonna be able to match the RPM output that you get out of this 2200 kV brushless motor. And if you do that and consider the bands of RPM, you're gonna get similar performance from a low kV and high kV brushless motor at low RPM ranges, as well as high RPM ranges. There's no advantage that you're getting from this low kV brushless motor at one RPM or another. They're gonna perform identically. Brushless motor manufacturers give us the opportunity to select KV values in order to optimize the amount of voltage that we want to run. And that's the biggest difference and where the difference actually lies. Well guys, that pretty well does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and got something out of it in terms of KV values, KT values, and the torque ultimately that we get out of a radio control vehicle. When it comes to power system selection, we definitely want to be optimizing that RPM and picking the KV value not based on torque but based on what kind of voltage we are running within our radio control vehicle and as long as we can select the right gearing we're going to end up with the picture perfect combination as always like the video if you do don't forget to hit that sub button so that i can see you guys in the next video thanks a lot for watching see you in the next one